Are you interested at all in this OJ documentary, Reg? Not really. Uh, obviously, we know most of the particulars. I am just so curious. All this is just now coming out. Was this 20, 21 years yeah. later that yeah. you know we're hearing you know reaching out to Bob Costas you know during the NBA Finals versus New York and Houston and. Uh, you know, not taking his arthritis medicine, you know, so his hands would continue to swell. How is that just now coming <laughs> up 20 years later? I know. Did you know O.J.? No. I, I may have met him, um, but did not, no, did not know him. Yeah, I'm, I met him a couple of times when he was working as a broadcaster, and then I interviewed him after he got out of prison. And um, that was not. How did that go? Because um, I'm sure your producers probably peppered you with questions they wanted to know. Did you have questions going into that interview that, look, th this is going to be my outline. These are the ones I want him to answer. No, that, it was going to be football, Or were people Reg. trying to persuade you to kind of, you know, put him on the spot? No, it was going to be football-related questions. That was it. Huh. Uh, because, I, you know, he'd already been found not guilty. And right. I think this may be 2004, and I go to Miami, and I, I said, look, it's just going to be football-related. And so we go in, and we're just talking about college. We talked about pros. And the awkward part was those tapes are 30 minutes long. My cameraman, as we get to the very end of the tape, and he says, uh, uh, going to stop you here. We're going to change tapes. So it's just me and OJ, and we're about three feet apart. So, what did you think? He was going to pounce on you or something? I, my body language during the interview was terrible, Reg. I'm leaning back as far as I can in my chair. I don't even realize it, as if O.J. has a knife on me, on <laughs> oh, him. Oh, come on. Okay, okay. so I, I sit there in silence as we're waiting for my cameraman to put in another tape, and O.J. says to me, do you think I did it? Oh, my, okay, now that's a little creepy. You know what I said? I said, did what? Oh, no, you did it. I swear to God I did. And he and said, did he look he at you crazy like? No, he said, killed those people. And I said, yes. It, you said yes. Yes. And, and his response was? That was the end of it. My cameraman said, you know, let, uh, I got the new tape in, fresh tape in. We can, we can start rolling again. So I then... Proceeded to ask him questions about football. And we, he's just looking at you like this dude thinks I'm guilty. He was he, guilty. Well, yes, but he's in his mind. He thought he was innocent. Oh, I know. Right? He, he did convince himself that he wasn't guilty. But so this is January of '03, Paulie. Yep. Oh man. So we get done. He proceeds to start telling me how crazy his life is, and that he said, for instance, I'm walking by a hotel room in Vegas. And they're shooting a porno, and they say to they they say to me as I'm walking by, Juice, we'll give you three million dollars to come in and be in the porno movie. He goes, that's how crazy my life is, and I'm thinking, <laughs> you think your life is crazy with that? <laughs> oh man, yeah, yeah, not one of my best moments when I uh, thought, hey, let's talk to OJ about football because he wanted to convince me that he was not guilty, and I wasn't buying any of it. Well, kudos for you for being honest and saying, uh, do what, and yes. <laughs> I just wish, I wish it would have been on camera because that, I mean, it was, it was really impactful, powerful, and I thought, okay, why not just tell him that I, I think you did it. If he wants to talk, because I had said, look, there won't be any questions about it, but he throughout wanted to keep convincing me that he didn't do it. And, well, uh, once tape started re-rolling, and after he asked you that question, in my opinion as a journalist, <laughs> I think it's fair game. You should have brought it up then because he asked the question, I, correct? I, yes, he did. Do you think I did it? But I had promised him it wasn't about that. So I was trying to hold up my end of the bargain, and I didn't want to make him mad. Your cameraman had your back. No. Yeah, those guys are only about 140 <laughs> pounds, right? <laughs> All right, let me get to last night. Uh, by the way, Reggie Miller joining us here. All right, so what did you expect last night going into the game? I expected what we saw. I, 
uh, unbelievable performance by LeBron James. Um, I wish I would have said this yesterday. I expected him to go. I don't think this happened, but I expected him to go to the free throw line 12 plus times. But if LeBron James is making that mid range shot, what we saw last night, and those timely threes, there's nothing you're going to be able to do against him. And with Kyrie being on fire as well, if those two guys continue to play like that the next two games or next game for in, in the case of the Cavs because it's a single un- elimination for them, there's nothing that the Warriors will be able to do. Really, there's not. If they continue to make plays, now I'm, I'm not saying they've both got to score 40, but if they continue to attack mm-hmm. and make plays, there's nothing the Warriors are going to be able to do. And my question is, where has this been? Especially for LeBron, where has this been through the first four games? Well, Kyrie's played well the last three games, but as, as I was saying I've earlier. In, Le- in LeBron's case, yes, Kyrie's played great. Yeah. They've had no answer for Kyrie, but LeBron and the attacking and you know being aggressive and looking for a shot through four quarters, not three, not two. Yeah. Uh, I was saying that to the Danettes, that the game plan has got to be, don't worry about anybody else. It's you and Kyrie, and you have to make, have to make a commitment and put pressure on Golden State. I want Golden State to be on their heels as opposed to the other way around, which is what Golden State does to you. So Kyrie has to say to Steph Curry, I'm going to keep you honest this entire game. And LeBron has got to say to Igudala or whoever's guarding him, I'm taking it and I'm taking it hard as many times as I can here. And you got to, he has to go to the line at least 10 to 15 times. So I, I can't sit there and worry about Kevin Love's feelings or J.R. Smith or anybody else who's going to be involved here. Those two guys have got to combine to take 50 shots in game six. Agree. And in game six on Thursday, I, I look for a better performance from Kevin Love because before this series began, I told you that the Warriors were going to take Kevin Love out of this series, yep. and that's exactly what they've done. But if they want to – reverse history because no team has ever come back in the NBA Finals down 3-1, they are going to need a performance or performances from Kevin Love. It's been a great two-man show, especially last night in Game 5 between Kyrie and LeBron, but that won't get it done again if there's a Game 7 back in Oracle because they're going to need uh, a whole cast of, of characters to win that. So, you know, those guys will play well at in Game 6. Uh, you know, I, I thought that Smith played well through the first half. He made shots. He made plays. But, again, Kyrie has been spectacular in this series. Yeah. You're right about putting pressure on, on Love. But, more importantly, his primary guy that's guarding him has been Clay Thompson. Yeah. But so you got to you know, I gotta, I gotta wear him out. I, gotta, I can't let him get in any kind of rhythm on offense. i got to have him feeling bad that he can't stop me on defense. But, again, I, I like what Steve Kerr said after the game. I like the position we're yeah. in versus what they're in, <laughs> which is true. Yes, yes. Um, and this is very unlike the OKC being up 3-1 versus the Warriors. You know, we said well, all Golden State has to do is win one game on the road, and everything shifts. And they did that in game six, and they had the game seven at home. Well, what you're telling the Cleveland Cavaliers to do is they have to win two games in Oracle. They won last night, and now they're going to have to win again if, again, if they win game six. They have to come back and win game seven on Sunday. Also, Draymond Green coming back. If you're the Cavaliers, how much are you trying to bait him, knowing that if he picks up another flagrant, then he doesn't play in game seven? Well, uh, hopefully he, he's smarter. I mean, he knew, he knew the rules. He knew the limit, the number he was at going into – game five and he understood that so it happened you move on you know it, it, it's time for us to move on the game happened everyone I don't think uh, he should have been suspended but you move on from it I, he heard his team not being out there but let me just say this too it's not like Draymond has been destroying teams and playing great throughout these playoffs he was terrible in the OKC series now, do I like my chances, and does he do so much for your ball club? Absolutely, yes. Do I love my chances with him on the floor? Absolutely. But it's not like he's been, you know, destroying teams. He was terrible in that OKC series. Yeah. 
I wonder what I don't. I wonder how he'll play, though. I wonder what his mindset is. To sometimes you want to overcompensate the fact that you weren't there for your team last night. Now you go into uh, Game Six, but you know, I'm not worried about Draymond. If the Warriors want to win back-to-back championships, Steph Curry is going to have to play like he did in Game Four. I, up until Game Four, Steph has really been a non-factor in this series. Now you said and I know that he, he had twenty plus points last night, but were those points really impactful? Clay's points were impactful. Were Steph's points impactful in that game? No. The story of that game was Kyrie and LeBron and Clay. And you still maintain that Ky, uh, that uh, Steph Curry's banged up, although he said, "Look, you know, whoever said I got problems with my shoulders or I'm going to need surgery, that's crazy." You still maintain there's something to Steph Curry. I do. I do. And when that came out that he potentially could have surgery on the knee and the shoulder, it doesn't surprise me. Now, again, he is supposed to come back and counteract and say, nope, nothing's wrong with me, because if you can lace them up and you're out there, then we're assuming you're 100 percent. But I would not be surprised if he has some type of surgery or he takes the whole summer off because he just does not look physically well. He does not look like the guy we saw during the regular season after the ankle injury early in that Houston series and then the knee injury. Well, there's something wrong with him, clearly, because if you look at those new shoes that he's wearing and he thinks they oh, look good. Oh, stop <laughs> it. Would you would wear you those, Reg? Those? No. I would, ro- I would rock those. Steph, I would rock those, those dad shoes. Come on. Come no? On. No, I've seen what you wear. What? You always, Here's you're... the thing. Do you think he signed off on them? He had to. They're they're his. He's he's under Armour's basketball unit. Yes, and they also have nursing shoes. Apparently, oh, that's not right, Theodore. You would not wear those shoes, Reg. I might rock them. No, I, I've seen what you wear. <laughs> you would not wear those in the booth. They would go. What what happened, Reg? Are you? Oh man, Reg. I might run, Yeah, I might get ran out of the booth. Like, look how old but, like, Reggie's old. He's got those you know, orthotics or something. What? What's but you know what? As much as people are killing those shoes and saying how old school they are, they're going to become fashionable because everyone's killing those shoes. Watch. This the, is how it works. Those shoes could cost him the series. Don't say that. But he's not wearing them, right? He just wears them. No. <laughs> yeah. Those are just like kick-around shoes, oh, right? Oh, oh, I don't know. Those are supposed to be like the Air Force Ones, right? You never had your own shoe, right? No. I Why not? That, I wasn't that good of a player. Come oh, on now. Oh, come on. Antoine no. Walker had his own shoes, Reg. I wasn't that high on the Nike food chain. You think if you had gone to like Fila, like Grant Hill, maybe you got your own <laughs> shoe? <laughs> L.A. gear. I did. You know what? Actually, I did have my own shoe when I first started. I was with, do you remember Spot Build? Yes. Shoes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I did have the, I had the Reggie Miller Spot Build. Did you help design them? No, but it was the one shoe that was, I had them for one year. I think they went under. See, they, they were the steps before steps. They went under because they were so bad. You're thinking, hey, look at what Jordan did for Nike. I'm doing That's that for right. spot build. This is what I was going to do for spot build. <laughs> oh, ground, ground Miller. There was Air Jordan. There was oh. Ground Miller. Oh, my God. I love them, though. <laughs> I love them. Did you I keep see a, pair? I have a pair of them? Oh. You know what? People always have those on YouTube or Craigslist. Can someone please eBay? find those spot belts? eBay. Please find those spot belts. Yes, Paulie. We have some pictures of spot belt shoes from the early 80s. They're, they're clunky. They're a little clunky. They are. They are. But I wore them with proud. <laughs> Thank you, spot belt, for me being your signature athlete. Do you still get Nike stuff? Like, no. you... uh, yes, I do. If if I, oh, you have to ask. Like for basketball camps and things like that. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah cause... But they don't send things just to be sending. I told you, I'm very, very low on the Nike total pole. But you're a Hall Thanks, of Famer. Phil. And, and 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 Phil and I, we went into Hall of Fame together. Wow, Phil Knight. But Thanks do you think it was Oregon UCLA that there's an issue there with Phil Knight? No, I think it was. 
Michael Jordan, Reggie Miller. <laughs> Wait, do you think Jordan said to Phil Knight, hey, can no, you stop giving no, Reggie gear? No, let me stop all that okay, now because okay. people are like, like to start things. No, no, no. What, Paulie? Dan, the I team is going to bring it all back together. Guess who else was a spot built guy in the 70s, early 80s? Oh, my God, who? O.J. Simpson. Rock <laughs> spot built cleats. Oh my God! Juice mobiles, they call. Both signature athletes for spot built. Yeah, the juice mobiles. Wow. The spot built juice mobiles. Man, I like it. Mm-hmm. Spot built. Polly, are, are there pictures of me wearing those spot built? Because they were hot. <laughs> we're looking. We are looking. They were hot. <laughs> Look, there's a picture of everything. Someone has pictures of me wearing those spot. We'll belts. see if we can find those. Uh, by the way, uh, who wins Game Six? Cleveland. Okay. I, I, all along, I've said this game, this okay. series is going seven. All right, all right. This is going seven. Okay. And then who wins in Game Seven? Oh, that's My right. You had Golden pick. State. Yeah, you already I had have Golden, Golden State. State winning in seven. Yeah. All right. By the way, I still owe you a dinner. You do, and I'll collect when you're out here for Sports Jeopardy. Well, I'm out in July. Uh, if if you're around, so just beautiful, yeah. So if you want to, I mean, it could be where you go to dinner with somebody you want to go with, and then I'll pay for it. it. I don't have to go to dinner with you. What? What, Paul? No, See, I want to go to dinner with Theodore. Reggie, I always look forward to our dinners. Dan, we have something huge. What? Uh-oh. We've got what? a picture here of Reggie dunking. Wearing a pair of uh, like white and blue spot built sneakers. It's him and X Man who's wearing the same pair but green. And Whoa. the biggest news is that he's dunking. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. For all you people who said that I could not dunk, it happened once. I like that picture, Seton Pauly, please. Wait, is he dunking over X Man? <laughs> no, no, they're both, they're, it's separate pictures. He's oh. in the picture. He's part of the poster. So it's a it's a wide open dunk by Reg. Like he's not posterizing anybody. No, no, there isn't no anybody in sight. <laughs> no one. Dang it. You couldn't Dang even it. dunk over Sean Bradley, Reg. Come on. Dang it. Everybody dunked over Sean Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> Look, my first two years, I could jump. That was it. My first two years. And then what happened? I just, you know, things happen. And then things happen. And now you need Steph Curry's shoes to walk around the neighborhood there. That's right. And a walker, too. I'm bringing spot bills back, <laughs> okay? Those were hot. X Men and the Juice were rocking them. Yeah. Now, someone go say something no, to the Juice no, or X Men. No, not going to. Oh, I'm looking at these shoes. You're with Dr. Jack Ramsey. That's right. My first coach. Look at that. You're looking clean with those, Red. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. They were hot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Could you rock them? Could you rock them? I could rock I remember, those. remember, people, these were the 80s, <laughs> 1987. I could rock those before I could the Steph Curry nursing shoes. Okay, 1987. They were hot. Enjoy the game, Reg. Always great. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. All right. Thanks, bud. You're the best. Theodore. All right. That's uh, Reggie Aloysius Miller. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on audience.